We have this story from the Babylon Bee. Check this out. Elon Musk vows to reveal government and media collusion once he figures out where these red dots are coming from. And it's a bunch of lasers pointed all over his body. So Elon Musk, uh, I guess he released this information to Matt Taibbi. There's a lot to go through. A lot, a lot to go through. And the first handful of tweets were so boring. And I was like, okay, I'm out. Like, it's like exposition of, hey, you know, there was censorship and collusion. And we're like, yeah, yeah, we know that. And so, uh, but finally, I think around tweet number eight, Matt Taibbi started to drop hard documents. What this shows is that Democrats had a strong direct line to Twitter to remove content that they felt should be removed. Let's just put it that way. It benefited them. They targeted people like real James Woods. Now, Matt Taibbi says both parties had access to these tools. However, he goes on to say the system wasn't balanced. It was based on context. Because Twitter uh, was and is overwhelmingly staffed by people of one political orientation, there were more channels, more ways to complain, open to the left, well, Democrats, than the right. He says the resulting slant in content moderation decisions is visible in the documents you're about to read. However, it's also the assessment of multiple current current and former high level executives. So currently he's releasing a lot of really interesting stuff. How about this one? White House spokeswoman Kayleigh McEnany was locked out of her account for tweeting about the Hunter Biden laptop story, prompting a furious letter from Trump campaign staffer Mike Hahn, who seethed at least pretend to care for the next 20 days. This led public policy executive Carolyn Storm to send out a polite WTF query. Several employees noted there was tension between the comms and policy teams who had little and less control over moderation and the safety and trust teams. I think the, 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 one of the big things here was that you have this. This is, uh, uh, let me just read the tweet. You can see the confusion in the following lengthy exchange, which ends up including Vijaya Gade and former trust and safety chief Yoel Roth. Comms official Trenton Kennedy writes, I'm struggling to understand the policy basis for marking this as unsafe. But at this point, everyone knew this was effed, said one former employee. But the response was essentially to err on the side of continuing to err. So we'll go through this. I'm not just going to track every single tweet. I want to get your guys' thoughts on what you've seen so far as, and then we'll bring up tweets as we go. Evidence of direct uh, uh, collusion? What do you think? I think it's the least surprising thing in the world. Now, I'm glad we get to see the actual documents. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad it's not just us assuming things because you're, you're looking at actual emails here. But... I, is anyone shocked tonight? Is, is, is anyone shocked to figure out that Twitter is staffed by a bunch of commies and that, <laughs> and that Twitter will censor out people with voices on the right and that Twitter has a direct line to people in the White House? This is how it's worked for a long time. Of, of This is why people don't worry about re-election when you're in a, a, the Democratic Party because you jump right from the Joe Biden administration. You go work for Twitter or you go work for right. CNN or you go... It's all just... What, what's, that, what's that George Carlin saying? It's all one club and we're not in it. Yeah. That's what it is. It's not surprising at all half these people are probably going to go work for joe biden next week that's right well it's very interesting because obviously democrats had more connections to twitter twitter obviously had a lot of employees there that were also donating a lot of money to the dnc but it was uh, according to these leaks both parties that had access to these tools and both parties including the donald trump administration and his white house had requested certain individuals be banned and their requests were granted. Now, a couple of days ago, The Intercept launched a story about how the DHS was uh, going around and banning people on big tech social media, predominantly because of a law passed by Donald Trump. So what was Donald Trump's involvement here? Did he create the tools? I mean, obviously, he passed a law with the DHS, according to The Intercept, that allowed all of this to happen from the very beginning. But did he set up the tools that entrapped him and hurt him eventually? I think that's worth asking today, especially with number 10, the reveal that uh, Matt Taibbi talked about. And I think it's worth considering the larger implications of it. I get what do the, you guys think? I get the vibe that these people are, are using like an ends justify the means mentality where, you know, I have a friend, a really good friend, like my first friend that I ever knew. Uh, we've been friends 45 years, 43 years. Some, and he uh, was like, sometimes, you know, you just have to punch. He was like the punch a Nazi mindset. I don't, I don't remember exactly the way he worded it. He's like, sometimes you got to use violence to stop evil. I'm like, no, dude, then you become the evil. That's not the way to do it. He's like, sometimes you need to use dishonest tactics to beat evil. And I'm like, that is not the path. Yikes. That that makes you evil. And uh, he, maybe he's right, because George Washington, dishonest, sowed dis confusion in his enemies, won the war. So there's an argument I see, but we're not at war in the United States. We're all civilians living in normal life. You're not supposed to like ban people because you're afraid that your political opponent, I, I, that's my opinion. I think that what they did was evil. 
and they thought that it would ju- the the ends of making sure Trump didn't get into the White House would, would justify it. But they are at war. I mean, this is the, this is something that I've certainly come around to in recent years. You're not, and I'm glad you're not, and I'm not. I'm glad you're not that type of person. But they are. We 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 make this mistake, or at least I, I shouldn't say I shouldn't lump anybody. With it. We make this mistake on the right all the time of we we set we take our values and we put them on the communists well i we i wouldn't go too far well i wouldn't say this or i wouldn't say that i i wouldn't just lie to get through this we're constantly taking our values and projecting them onto people who do not share our values they would in their minds right or wrong and they're obviously wrong but right or wrong in their minds they are at war with an evil racist misogynistic united states of america that deserves to be brought to its knees now we can call them nut jobs and they are but we have to acknowledge whether or not we are they are at war and they act like they're at war they it would never occur to one of these commies to have possession of twitter and have the ability to stop us and not use it that, that's how the right thinks. Well, I should abstain from using power. They don't think that way at all. They use power when they get it. Some high profile uh, leftist personalities actually said this. When it was announced that Elon was going to buy the platform earlier in the year, they started, we started seeing all of these people say, oh, no, now we're going to get banned. He's going to come for us. And there was one Twitter exchange with a prominent leftist where they were like, Elon is trying to restore people. Why would you think that he's going to censor you? You're, and then someone said something like, it's because they're projecting. And someone said, exactly, because we know how power is wielded. So you basically had these conversations among prominent leftists where they were like, we expect the right to come after us and censor us because that's exactly what we do. And that's how you use power. And people on the right are, are uh, I say right loosely because it's like libertarians, moderates, former liberals keep doing this thing. Like, I'll give you an example. Rick Santorum comes on the show. Gra- uh, glad to have him. And he said, we can't impeach Joe Biden. We, we have to play by the rules. We can't. And it's like oh, Joe Biden gosh. is suspected of very serious crimes and corruption. And you're saying we shouldn't do it. We shouldn't do it because we don't want to stoop to their level. And if only one side is act- actively engaged, well, then only one side is actually going to win. But here's the best part. They say the exact same thing about what we talk about. They say the, there's a culture war happening and the right are the only ones fighting it. Meanwhile, Republicans have no agenda. They're sitting on their hands. And even if they do take Congress, they're taking Congress now. We're likely going to see very little done. Oh, we'll see nothing done. Actually, oh. no, I take that back. That's not fair. Sorry. Luke, no, no, no. To, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. We'll see plenty done. It'll still be more of the left because of the absolute eunuchs we have that run the Republican Party. It is the low T GOP. They'll work with the, <laughs> the, they'll work with the Democrats for two years and they'll brag that they're spending a little bit less. You know, we're, we're not being as radical as they are, mm. but still we'll only go left because, like I said, we have this nutless party that's supposed to represent us and they don't actually represent anybody except themselves and their lobbyists in Washington, D.C. Normal working people who just want to be left alone have virtually no representation in D.C. The, the low t- I just want to make a, a quick point here because you're right on the money when you said uh, low T GOP. Uh, but uh, I also see it as the GOP also setting up the infrastructure, which will be later d- uh, down the line used against them. If you remember, after uh, 9-11, the GOP set up a national security state, which now is turning inwards instead of outwards and is looking at the people who set them up, the political party who set them up as as enemies of the state, punishing them, censoring them, not allowing them to organize, not allowing them to do anything and have any kind of significance when it comes to future political power. So the GOP, even though they're low T, they do deserve to be criticized for setting up the DHS for censoring people. They 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 do they should be criticized for setting up this national security state, which is used against the people. I, I want to give you guys an example, uh, and and, it, and, it's, and it, it probably requires a lot of examples so you can understand the difference. When uh, you get like a right wing group, say the Proud Boys marching through Portland, the right will say nothing in their defense. Like, I mean, like prominent politicians and things like that. In fact, they'll probably be like, we reject white supremacy. Donald Trump, stand back and stand by, which was a wacky, nonsensical statement. When far leftists across the country started burning down buildings and quite literally killing people in the summer of love. Joe Biden's campaign and Kamala Harris herself solicited donations to bail these people out. That's an easy, easy example of the asymmetrical culture war. The right will be like, hey, look, you know, we're, we're not a fan of what's going on here. We condemn it because it's wrong. And the left will be like, we can say that whenever we want. We can criticize you for your bad actions, but we're going to give money to our bad actors and there's nothing you can do. I'll give you another example. When uh, January, was it January 20th, 2017? 
when far left extremists, Antifa went around smashing windows and burning, uh, uh, setting a car on fire in Washington, D.C., and then there was a mass arrest. They actually sued the city of D.C. and won. <laughs> Antifa won, I think, like a million plus or some ridiculous number, and most of their charges were dropped. That's asymmetrical. Well, it was Mao who said all political power comes from the barrel of a gun. Yeah. These people, it, it is, if you were to pull the average American, not just left or right, but just to go find 10 people in the mall somewhere and ask them who commits political acts of violence, most of those people would say the right. Yep. And I want to make sure I give them credit because they chronicled it. I didn't. Breitbart actually listed all 395 mm -hmm. incidents of assault and murder against Trump supporters during Trump's four years in office. The, it's a laundry list of people getting shot in the head molotov cocktail it is it is nasty yet people don't know about this why don't they know about it because the people who bring us the news in this country i, I know people think think this is too harsh they actually want to see you hurt they yeah. do it's not it's not that they're ignoring it they're not biased they're not liberal they're not to the left no 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 they are actually your mortal enemy and if you were to get shot in the face for what you believe crossing the street tonight not a single one of them would shed a tear they wouldn't even report on it because well, they'd be thrilled about it they would report on it What's the old saying? Do you know? If it bleeds, it leaks. Yeah, yeah. And so what they would do is, is they would, uh, well, to be fair, though. They would write articles it, saying that they were asking for it. Of they, course. They, they would say, like, you know, mutual conflict. I, my, my, my favorite article uh, uh, pertaining to this goes back to the uh, 529 insurrection at the White House, where NBC wrote, uh, uh, what is it? They said, say, they said um, St. John's Church set, uh, set fire after peaceful protest becomes destructive, or something to that effect. <laughs> Instead of saying violent extremists tore down barricades at White House, injuring law enforcement officers and setting fire to building, they said peaceful protest turns destructive. I, I, I use the example a lot that we are sandwiched. And when I say we, I'm just talking about normal people, not, 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 ju not just the people in this room who are highly informed, normal people, friends of yours. We are sandwiched and people don't realize it because what's happened is you mentioned the people who got out without charges. There was some commie hag in New York City, I forget her name, Molotov cocktailed an NYPD cop car. And I believe she just got 18 months. I think she could have got 20, 30 years slap on the wrist and she's gone. What happens is they own every institution now from the DOJ on down. And they also own most of the vile, mentally ill street scum at the bottom who's more than willing to commit acts of terror. So Joe Biden will get up behind the podium and he'll call you a threat to democracy. You'll end the republic, a Nazi white supremacist. The vile street scum understand that they have nothing to live for and they understand those are marching orders. And they also understand if they were to do something that the people on the top will run a protection racket for them in the bottom. And so who's screwed? We're screwed. The normal people in the middle who don't have any protection. Thanks for watching this. This clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.